I want to challenge two standard notions of what it is to be rational. Okay, go for it. Okay, so one notion of what rationality is, you know, it's kind of the Spock version uh, for, for, uh, for those of you, you and I of that generation, we know, right, mm-hmm. this idea that, to, that uh, rationality is logicality. And you see this in, uh, you know, there's a lot of sort of online forums that sort of, that's the model of rationality, that rationality is um, to be as logical as, as possible. Um, and Mr. Spock sort of exemplified that. Um, and the problem with that is uh, it, it, we, have to, we have to set it into an overarching idea that ultimately we are goal directed. We are, we're seeking goals, we're seeking to achieve goals. And so one thing we have to note is that what rationality means method, as a method for us is we're looking for the most reliable and systematic way of achieving our goals, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so you say, wow, but that's fine. Uh, logic is the most reliable and systematic way of achieving truth. The problem with that is it's not true. Um, not because logic isn't rele- relevant to rationality, but you can't identify rationality with logic. And here's the problem. Logic works in terms of certainty and a completely formal system. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what that means, and I'm trying, not to tr- I'm trying not to presuppose too much, be presumptuous of what people have seen in this series, but what that means is you're basically into a kind of processing that has to check all of the problem space. It has to check all of the information. It has to check all the possible options. You, you have to be comprehensive and exhaustive. You have to be kind of like a, mach- a machine of some kind. rather no than machine, Yeah, but right? no machine can do that. Like even, yeah. our, even our best chess playing machines can't mm-hmm. search all the possible options. It's combinatorial explosive. They can't search all of the, like that, the, you, this, this, the, the problem of search is, is, is it still the profound problem. It's the, it's the, it is so it's just too problem. much, too much There's information. Too much. Too yeah. much. So if you were, and everybody acknowledges this, who is working in, within rationality, Herbert and Simon, you know, I think it was, was it Simon's book? I think, was it Newell and Simon or Simon's book? I think bounded rationality that Rationality is always bounded in terms of what's actually possible for us. Uh, Cherniak mm-hmm. talked about we're in the finitary predicament. Uh, and this goes to the core of my work. Mm-hmm. We can't reason, we can't make inferences on the basis of all possible options, all possible probability, right? all possible information. That's combinatorially yeah. explosive. So what we do is we bound it. We zero in on what's salient. Here, you knew I was going to do this. Yeah. And relevant to yeah. us, Right. And, and so that means before you can even use logic, you have to have pre-logical processes of problem formulation, the direction of attention, searching mm-hmm. memory, and those are not obstacles to being rational because they prevent you from being fully logical. They actually facilitate, they, they constitute you being a viable cognitive agent. If you don't have that, you're going to be sick. The next... The next task I try to perform, I'm going to hit combinatorial explosion, and then I've committed cognitive suicide. Mm-hmm. So, so if we're dreaming or something like that, you know, a dream is is we don't normally think of a dream as as being rational, but it could. But, be. but it could it could have a rational function, or it could have a yes. Is that what you mean? Well, uh, uh, more than that, I mean, I, I think that what you see is fu- uh, one plausible account of what dreaming does is it's a kind of optimization process on how your brain is operating. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it's not so much the content of the dream, but it's sort of the way in which your, your, your brain is sort of practicing getting better at adjusting what it finds salient and relevant. So it does weird variations on mm-hmm. patterns that you've sort of acquired through the day, mm-hmm. and it sees which one of those sort of optimize its ability to track and predict and solve problems. That's why you're often solving weird problems in your dreams. Right, right, right. yeah. Right, and yeah. so, and that, that looks all sort of crazy. It's all illogical. But it could turn out to be rational because it could be actually optimizing this process of relevance realization that is so central, especially, Mm. and here's what I want to come back, if it systematically and reliably improves your ability to zero in on relevant information, and then I'm going to add something to that that is directly implied by that, it systematically and and reliably improves your ability to overcome self-deception, then I think that's how we we should understand rationality. Rational practice is a practice that systematically and reliably improves your ability to overcome self-deception and to optimize your ability to zero in on the relevant information such that you are more and more capable of being a good general problem solver and achieving your goals. 
And that's what rationality means. So it's not logicality, but it's also not just being intelligent, mm -hmm. right? Because the problem with intelligence is intelligence is basically, uh, Leo and I argue this, Leo Farrar and I argue this, and, and I think you can make a good case that a lot of people are, are implicitly arguing for this, that what we're measuring when we're measuring intelligence is we're measuring sort of your working memory capacity to zero in on relevant information. And mm. the problem with that is, and this is the issue, right? Very often what I, what I initially might find relevant or salient is actually a kind of bullshitting. It's actually taking me away, right, from being able to solve the particular problem. I'm paying attention to the wrong things because my machinery is designating certain things as relevant or salient that actually will not help me to zero in on or track the patterns that I need in order to find my goals, right? And this is where you need insight. Yeah. This is, when you have an aha experience, you realize, oh no, I formulated the problem the wrong way and I've got to change what I find relevant and salient. And mm -hmm. that means if we have an account of rationality in which insight does not play a central role, we do not have a good account of insight because mm -hmm. the machinery of insight is the machinery by which you optimize your ability to zero in information. And it's the same machinery you use to overcome self-deception. Mm -hmm. So the problem with that, with the with uh, the, uh, the, uh, the idea of it just being intelligent is rationality. So intelligence is what you're using. Well, there's a lot of, uh, if I could just, there's a lot of very stupid, intelligent people, right? Well, I would say they, they have, they have the, the machinery is all there, but they're not using it correctly or that's right. They're, they're that's not using it in a, in a optimized way or in a, in a, let's say ethical way or in a, uh, or, yeah. a, or 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 a non self delusional way, right? Right. AK, right? right? And so that's exactly my point, Andrew. They're 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 you know, you use your intelligence to solve your problems, but that can generate all kinds of skewed salience landscapes, capacities for acting yeah. immorally, for acting in a self deceptive manner. Rationality is what you use in order to deal with all of that, right? All of those right. negative side effects generated by uh, using your intelligence in an adaptive manner. So the rationality is 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 a practice uh, rather than uh, something you're just born with. In other oh, words, yeah. no, no, you, that, you that's very to... important to think to, to to know that right. That yes. it's something yes. you work on, uh, and it's it's. You said it was aspirational, right? It's something. Yes, it's something yes, you, you want, you want to, to become a rational person, even though. Um, it seems like an ideal, like uh, it's not a very likely uh, scenario that you would become one hundred percent. Uh, rational. Um, yeah, I don't. I, I I don't even know if um, if that's possible. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't even know if that's the correct way to frame it. Uh, okay. uh, because because it uh, uh, it brings with it a sense of an idea of completeness or finality, and because your relevance, real, because your intelligence is a self-organizing, evolving, dynamical system, and because the world is a self-organizing, dynamical system, there's no there's no sort of final state you can get into where you can say where you can pronounce now I am forever free from some, yeah, the yeah. problem. So it's of all of process, self. sort of. It's all process. All right. Well, this is this is how I interpret the first noble truth of Buddhism. I'm not a Buddhist, mm -hmm. but like even though you know Alexander says I am, but right, <laughs> uh, right. Uh, uh, um, because, but I interpret it as, you know, not that all of life is suffering, because that makes no sense, but that no matter where you turn, there is no place in which you can be free from the threat of self-deceptive, self-destructive behavior, no matter how smart you are, no matter how intelligent you are. Yeah, you'd always so, be missing something, wouldn't you? You'd always have a blind spot somewhere. Well, uh, uh, or you always of, have a lot of blind spots. Uh, a you lot know. of them. No. So, you know, if you take a look, a lot of psychology is going through the replication crisis. Results are getting replicated. Well, you know what is robustly getting replicated time and time again? All this stuff about cognitive bias, all this stuff about self-deception, all this stuff about how intelligence is necessary but not sufficient for rationality. All of that is very, very robust. It is not going through the replication application crisis. It's an aspect of our cognition that we should have very strong confidence in, which means, given these two points, we should not think of rationality as identical to either logicality or either to our intelligence, our sort of uh, our, our innately given problem solving capacity, because that's what I think um, intelligence is. And, 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 and I think this would actually ameliorate a lot of useless debates. People don't like the idea you know, that IQ 